So here we are again. Do you guys remember this thing? This is your chain tool. Here you have a single speed one eighth width chain. That's what you guys want to get. You want to find the single speed chain, which is a, uh, they're a little bit thicker than the regular road chains. So that's going to be more durability for you. And uh, they also come in lots of fruity colors. And they always come longer than you need them, which is why you need the chain tool. Let's scrape it across. And then you pull it tight and you start looking how much of it, I'm trying to show you guys, how much of it you're going to cut off here. In this package, you're going to find a master link, which is how you're going to connect your chain. You've got three pieces on a master link. You have this that goes like that, and then this is the retaining clip that snaps in place behind it all. So now, and then you start looking for how short you can make this chain. Probably something like this. But you also want to be watching your dropouts as you do this. And what you want to do is you want to have space that you can adjust it backwards. You can pull this wheel back in your dropouts so you can actually tension this chain uh, tighter than this. Because right here it's going to slip off if it's that loose. So it's sort of a balance of figuring out how far you can go back in your dropouts to how many links you're going to leave in your chain. And this, this bike has the added difficulty of, of not actually being a full horizontal bike. Uh, Schwinn in their infinite wisdom like filled in that section of the, of the frame. I don't quite understand why, but they, they didn't leave a lot of space for adjusting out the chain. It's this movement, this uh, horizontal movement that's gonna give you your chain tension. So we're gonna try right there and see how, see how tight we can get this thing. Say right there. Here's our link. So now we got it looking like that. This is what you want. Here you go. So once you get that master link on part way, you grab your end cap and then you get your retaining clip on there too. And I use I use a needle nose pliers most times. But that, that clips on like that. Here's another trick that I want to show you. Uh, this is how you tension your single speed chain. A lot of guys have a hard time tensioning their single speed chain, so I'm going to show you the trick behind that. Little uh, little monkey wrench in the plans of getting this bike together with immediacy. We can't get the chain tight, and we can't get the chain tight because the dropout doesn't go far enough horizontally to tension this chain. This is what you really didn't want to find in your project. There's a couple things you could do. Spin this around a little bit. This right up here, called the master link, this connects the chain. Now if we take one link out of the chain, this wheel is too far forward in the dropout and it's, uh, it's, it, it's some danger of moving forward because the, the wheel wants to move forward under heavy braking and you don't want your wheel sliding out. So the solution, there's a couple options. We could use a half link, which kind of looks like this master link, but it's uh, shorter. We don't have any half links. That would be my first bet. Since we don't have any half links, second best thing is an angle grinder. Totally do not ever do this. This is definitely a thing you don't do, but it's time to do some angle grinding. So here's the problem that we're having, you guys. You see this rear dropout? They didn't cut out the rest of the material right here. Now, I've, I've seen this very few times in my life, um, but it does happen. You can see on the back dropout, a normal horizontal dropout. This dropout somehow they decided they just were gonna leave the casting in there. If you've never used an angle grinder you probably shouldn't. You should find somebody that knows how to use an angle grinder and use it with them because it's it's a tool that I think a lot of people ended up in the hospital because of. I know at least three people that have ended up in the hospital because they weren't wearing eye goggles and something uh, got in their eye, little chunks of metal, or um, one guy he lost a finger. So be really careful with this tool. This is not like it's not a screwdriver. 
All right, the safety goggles on. And guess what? As much as I love scarves, this thing. You see? Now right, we're getting there as far as cutting this thing out. Just take it slow. Because what you really don't want to do is cut out more material than you have to because you're weakening the frame of your bicycle and that's never ever a good thing. So this is what we ended up with when we started grinding out that uh, little piece of material in the frame. I just want to say again that I totally do not recommend this idea. And if you do it, take it really slow. Be really careful. Do not take off more material than you need to. And I think the only time I would actually do this is if I ran into exactly the same situation as I had seen where there was a piece of material in, built into the frame on one side and not the other. I've seen it on maybe half a dozen frames in a bunch of years. So it's not a very common problem. Now we can tension the chain. So here we go. Now we're gonna tension our, our chain. There we are. Now look at this. Now we have a tight chain. Here's the trick too for tensioning your single speed chain. I'm gonna show you from the back. I think the best way to tension a single speed chain is actually to bring the chain Bring the wheel all the way over to the, what would be, I guess, the, the driver's side if you were in a car, all the way over to the left. And you tighten it down kind of tight. And then you use the leverage. Instead of trying to pull the wheel directly backwards in the dropout, which is a real pain in the butt, you use the, the leverage to get this, this part of the chain tight. So you, you push over here with my hand. I'm, I'm sort of centering this wheel in the rear dropout like that. And then I'm going to tension it over here. Tighten these down almost with all your strength because your life depends on them not moving forward. Uh, on a fixed gear bicycle or a coaster brake bicycle, the wheel wants to move forward with braking. So if those aren't tight, what will happen is the, the wheel will slide out of your dropouts and you'll have a big, big accident. Um, we're going to stick the coaster brake strap on this. And then we're going to go for a ride because the bike's done. Boom. I'm going to put on the coaster brake strap here. If you guys choose to run a coaster brake, you're going to need this little piece of hardware here. Just bolts through. And tighten it down as tight as you can get it. Final step for testing out your bike is skidding like the devil. This bike is about 10 centimeters too small for me. But there you guys are. Single speed chain ring, single speed chain, coaster brake rear wheel, no front brakes, no back brakes, except the coaster brake. Um, generally a lot cleaner bike, a lot lighter bike, a lot more agile bike, and it's your bike. You built it, you designed it. And this is just the beginning, you know, like if we really wanted to do this nice, we'd be doing paint. We'd be doing um, a different type of handlebar or a different type of wrap, different color tires, stuff like that. But this is the basic guide on how to convert your bike from a 10-speed road bike into a single-speed bike. Thanks.